Hey, it's Chris Leisure Games. Let's do this and let's just get right into it. April 12th, the week of April 12th, a little bit on the 12th, a little bit on the 11th, everything kind of coming to fruition. Now, this is where some of the bigger names are going to be coming this week as well as on the 19th. So if you were kind of lulling and kind of saying, ah, April is kind of bleh, well, <laughs> tune in, here we go. And I mean, it should be a lot better and more concise this time around because somehow the first half of this whole video, that file disappeared. So I get to do it a second time. Love it. But anyway, let me know what you think. Smash that like button, hit subscribe if you're not. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit at the end. Let me know what else you wanna see out of this video or my crowdfunding videos in general. Let's do this. Go right into it. This is Silas. This is the third child. So you now know that you have proof that I have at least one. This is the Dark Quarter, though. This is Dark Quarter uh, launched from Lucky Duck Games. This game is based on the premise of Destinies and Chronicles of Crime, where you have this system where you are set in the 1980s noir, true blood meets New Orleans, mystical murder voodoo background, where you are investigating a series of gruesome murders with that aspect as one of these four private investigators, including a sorceress, a vampiress, I'm going with vampiress, female vampire, uh, widowed mysteriously detective, as well as a drunk alcoholic former detective, through a four scenario containing base game and trying to solve them as you go. It is more of a 1.5 version, I would say, of the Destiny system, which is very reminiscent, now only including abilities that are going to go with you throughout the campaign that you can upgrade in order to achieve better results when you're using dice. Now, it is also an app-based system, and you're going to refresh the dice that you use one per turn, just like the Destiny system, and you take the sum of those dice, and you look at your board, and every cube that is equal than or less than that sum is the amount of successes that you type into the app, which is going to affect how you interact with NPCs, how you get clues, what resources you find, how you solve things, everything along those lines. It's done very well, although you did not see, but it is definitely here. There is an M for mature in the lower left-hand corner that my head is covering up now. And so again, having played the first scenario, I can confirm that it is mature. So be aware, but it's launching on the 12th. Next up, very high on the list, is going to be Last Light. Last Light from Gray Fox Games, from Roy, from the Dice Tower. The question from my standpoint is, I've gotten about a dozen emails from Gray Fox Games over the last couple of months. Nothing telling me extensively about the game itself, but giving me uh, information on one of these various factions that are going to be in it, sort of more like Cosmic Encounter. And the key hook in this is that it plays as a 4X spacefaring game in under an hour. But apart from that hook, what do we know about the mechanics? And I have not seen hardly anything out there in terms of the actual mechanics. Now, let's check the page here. Has anything been updated since the first two times I did this? No, it hasn't. So we really don't know a whole lot more. Why am I going to get this? Apart from just playing in an hour, is it going to hold true? Like, I think of this, and the first thing that comes to mind is tiny epics, right? They're tiny, and they play shorter, but they aren't always as good or aren't nearly as good as the games that they're based on or the mechanisms that you're using elsewhere. And so I worry that all you've done is condense it into an hour and not necessarily made it better. I want to see better. And so, I mean, I'm going to be following and be watching and I'm intrigued because 4Xs are, you know, there's only one in my collection as a whole. And if I can play in an hour, I mean, that's the big problem with 4Xs for me in the first place. I don't have three or four hours to play. So I'm interested. Show me what you got. Gray Fox. Roy. Next up, also staying on GameFound, this is for Northwood. I will be having my video out in the next day or two for this one. This is a great game. It's a great trick-taking game. It's a great solo game. If you like either of those things, I highly recommend you check this out because as a non-solo person, I found myself having a lot of fun with this game. I was really impressed by it, and I don't say that lightly. The gist of it is there are eight fiefdoms that you are trying to win. And each of them is going to require you to win a different amount of tricks from the hand that you start with. You're going to be having eight cards in your hand. You have to win anywhere from zero to seven tricks, depending on which fiefdom you are going up against. You will have four cards right here in front of you that are going to be able to be manipulated or used their special abilities during that hand against that particular fiefdom in order to allow you to manipulate your cards in ways, including the trump or the number of cards or how many cards 
to give you an advantage to try and meet the number because you have to meet the exact number of tricks won. And again, zero is not easy. Seven out of the eight tricks, not easy. And so those are going to give you ways to do that. And if you win that fiefdom, you get the kingdom card, the ruler card there, to join or replace one of your cards. But that card is active while you're going against it. So it potentially can affect you know what you're doing or which order you're going to do them in the first place. There are multiple different fiefdoms that you can choose from. So it's not just eight. I think there was something like at least 24 that I was given. So again, very well done. Uh, there's enough video already on here that if you want to check it out even before my video, you can. And again, I highly recommend it. The price point is actually up here as well too now, finally, from the first time I did it. And it's $15. So it's a price I really can't complain about whatsoever. I seriously think you should check it out. It's worth it. There you go. Also launching on the 11th, we have Far Cry Beyond. Uh, the latest IP video game to make it over to crowdfunding. And this is from FunForge. Originally supposed to launch, if you can read that graphic in the upper right-hand corner, about a month ago, just over a month ago. Got delayed. Uh, Quack & Co. had some videos out a couple days before it, but... Uh, apparently they just didn't give the memo to everyone because then all of a sudden it got delayed and here we are a month later and it's going to be launching again. So we'll see what it does. I have no clue if it's going to be more like the bigger IPs that we've seen like Darkest Dungeon or The Witcher or if it's going to be more in lines with Borderlands and Deep Rock Galactic, both of which, I mean, did extensively well. But I just worry about video game IPs and the quality that's coming out with them. I don't want to see them rushed out. I want to see them have solid games. And this is being presented to us as a 1980s-ish co-op game with the Far Cry label on it. And I don't know what it entails. It just gives me vibes of Borderlands, the board game, uh, from the end of 2021. And apart from their videos, we haven't really seen anything else in terms of exclusivity, in terms of how much, in terms of price point. And so I need to see more. I need to see more, especially I'm assuming a heavily miniature, plastic-filled, triple-digit uh, base game. So that's what it's bringing out to us. And we'll just kind of see where else it goes on the 11th. Also, super excited about this one, but super trepidatious. Cryptozoic is coming to crowdfunding, and this is the DC Deck Building 10th Anniversary Edition, which is going to have several different elements, including a new version of Rivals, the one or two, the one to two player version of Deck Builder with Flash and Reverse Flash. Not bad Flash. I'm a little bit more knowledgeable than that. I'm not wearing my Flash shirt though. Uh, Silas was super excited the second time we did this video because he was sitting on my lap and he's going da 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 da. He recognizes Superman and it's da 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 da. Anyway, uh, and the Injustice League is going to be part of it and it's going to bring some sort of skirmish uh, mode that is going to be part of this as well. Multiverse containing, but also potentially maybe a big box. So we'll see what Cryptozoic has in store for us. This is launching on the 12th. And if they can make it, again, as someone who was not really a big fan of the original sort of base game, I know that it, numerous iterations and expansions have added stuff and made it uh, a better, deeper game. But if you can give that core experience, sort of like Sentinels of the Multiverse has done more recently with like a 2.0 or 3.0 version, I would be much more interested and much more potentially invested in this. But I'm going to be watching when it launches, so uh, I will have this one saved. There you go. Next up, we have Lawyer Up. And this is basically Ace Attorney, the board game. Now they're going to have Season 2 launching on the 12th. This is a two-player, one-to-one, head-to-head game where this is a milk cup. And you have, essentially, a prosecutor going against a defense attorney. And you are trying to sway the jury the most in your direction. And you're going to be going through, I think, several different rounds or phases where the first round you're piling up or choosing evidence for your side that's going to give you more sway towards uh, the second round, which is going to be um, calling and choosing witnesses. And then the next phase of things where you're trying to have or present the most sway for the jury one way or the other. I think there was something along the lines of about three main big scenarios that you were doing with some replayability uh, back and forth. Obviously, if you're choosing back and forth witnesses and evidence in each game. Uh, the question, like several other of these games, which have gone with a season two, like Unsettled or even Sleeping Gods coming next week, is what is the first season going to look like? Are we going to see first season uh, reprinted or available during this Kickstarter campaign like we did previously? So we'll just kind of have to see when it launches on the 12th. Also launching on the 12th, we have Blade Rondo, which is a re-implementation of Bread Rondo uh, from Japanime Games. And this is uh, definitely an, an anime-inspired game, but this is a more like Sakura Arms in the sense that you are going head-to-head -head in a two-player game where you are dealt or you have a deck of total of 40 cards where you each get 15 cards. From those 15 cards, you choose seven of them. And then from those seven, you play them in any order of your choosing in order to maximize their efficiency and the points and the take that. 
to be the better one after all the cards have played. I am potentially going to be getting a copy, so hopefully sometime during the campaign I can give you my thoughts on it. I'm looking, staring at my copy of Tokyo Sidekick from Japanime Games, which I got about two weeks ago. And again, similar to that one, I'm wondering what goes along with that and what's going to be the exclusivity reason uh, or that I would potentially get it now versus retail. Uh, you know, supporting a small publisher, obviously. Uh, Japanime Games has not had as many exclusives in the past couple campaigns, so we'll kind of see how that falls this time. And it's from the Domina Anthology series, I think of which they've had two previous Kickstarter campaigns that have done relatively well as well. So we'll see what this one entails when it launches on the 12th. Now, going to the next one, we have another uh, well-known name. This is Elf Creek Games' Paradox Initiative, where we are going in as Paradox scientists, forming a Paradox engine, trying to grab strands and threads from different multiverses, trying to create the best uh, engine and the most pieces that we can collect in this set collection, resource management, and card drafting style of game. And it, those mechanisms really excite me. And uh, I was not a potentially huge fan of Merchants of the Dark Road, just too complicated, too worker placement for me, too many things going on. But uh, again, as someone who does not own many space games, the theme is appealing and the mechanisms are very appealing to me. And so I'm really interested to see what Elf Creek does with this. Now, if it stays true to more of Merchants, it's going to be very deluxified. What is the deluxification going to look like? Because it's less work replacement. And again, what are those mechanisms going to look like in action? So I'm really intrigued by this one. Um, again, high on my list this week. A lot of interesting stuff launching on the 12th. Then, also on the 12th, we have a game called Fortress of Terror, which is a solo roll and write. But it's a campaign roll and write that you are playing through four separate scenarios that are linked together as you are a humble peasant thrust into the role of hero, traversing across the land through mazes that are these individual rounds and campaigns, trying to find relics and powerful items and resources along the way to help your peasant upgrade into the hero that needs to defeat the evil villain at the end in his final fortress. These indie roll and write games, this one gives me the vibe of Island Alone, which is sort of the uh, Robinson Crusoe-esque version of the solo roll and write right now that's on crowdfunding. And so they've kind of been an under the radar sleeper hit for a lot of people, I think. So definitely don't overlook this one as well when it launches on the 12th. Next up, we have Don't Let It Die, co-op survival game. This is a re-implementation, new artwork of this co-op survival game where you are prehistoric, anywhere from one to four Neanderthals trying to survive, fight off predators, learn the mysteries of fire, and collect the resources you need in this strategic, cooperative, top-of-the-food-chain style game. You can see a little bit of what the old version had right here and see how it kind of interacted and what it looked like aesthetically. So I would imagine it's going to be sort of an upgraded version of not only aesthetics, but rules, as well as whatever mysteries they have in surprise for us when it launches on the 12th. Again, as a little bit of a different twist on the co-op side of things, I'm not a huge fan of the theme, but if the mechanics can work, uh, color me interested. So I'll be checking it out. Also launching on the 12th, we have Robotech. Uh, a new implementation of a skirmish style ask Robotech game where you are going head to head building your mechs in a four phase round of planning, movement, battling, and then combat itself at the end. And now I know I said battling and combat, but that's how they're labeled essentially on the Board Game Geek description. Now it looks obviously on here to re-implement a little bit of something akin to X-Wing or Armada. So we'll see what it all entails when it actually launches. And again, I know Robotech has had a very robust following in the past IP-wise, but IP-wise on crowdfunding, Robotech has not always had the best association. And so there have been a lot of Robotech people disappointed and burned in the past. So we'll see if this is any different when it launches on the 12th. Next up, uh, Birds of the Feather, Western North America. And this is a little bit of a different game coming from Snow Bright Studio, a re-implementation again of a previous Birds of the Feather version. This one is going to be more one to seven players uh, with a special emphasis on a better two to three player player count where you are playing birds from your hand of one of five different habitats. And depending on where you put them, how you put them, when you put them, what you mark down based on what else is played with the other players. You score points based on the type of bird, the habitat, and so forth. And the person at the end, after all the cards have been played, with the most points wins. So it's launching on the 12th as well. Then we have a game called Escape from Stalingrad Z, where you are a prisoners escaping from Stalingrad in World War II. And lo and behold, you're finding yourself surrounded by zombies and having to fight off zombies as well as, you know, the Axis. 
powers. So, you know, because, I mean, why wouldn't zombies be there? And this is very reminiscent, at least in style, of more of a Jaws of the Lion with a scenario-based narrative campaign book that is laying flat with miniatures that are going on top of that that has unreveals based on the rooms or the areas that you're entering as you proceed. Again, it looks to be miniature-based. It's got some heavy competition this week, so we'll kind of see what it looks like and what it entails when it finally launches. Also launching on the 12th, we have Stellar Expedition, where you are one of several spacefaring crews going through mysterious gates, launching you to parts unknown of the galaxy, where you are then forced to fend for yourself, including building alliances with the locals, finding resources, building embassies, and just getting whatever you need in order to get through the gates at the end of the game so that you're not left behind. And so this is going to be an interesting implementation with all of the other space games launching this week that I already mentioned. How does it set itself apart? How does it just change what we've seen in other space fairing exploration games as well? So I'm interested to see, but it's going again up against some stiff competition this week within its own thematic, <laughs> you know, genre. So we'll kind of see what it looks like when it launches on the 12th. Also, finally up on the 12th, we have Tabletop Golf Association game. And I've seen this. Uh, the designer has been very active on a few of the smaller uh, crowdfunding uh, Facebook groups. I mean, it's golf on the tabletop, right? And so, again, I just don't know what the niche or what the interest in something like this is. Uh, they obviously have had prototypes and the ability to test it out locally. And so it's going to be interesting to see because the modularity of being able to make different holes and how the pieces are going to slide across those boards and how they're going to interlock and not have sort of ridges that are going to bump them potentially. I mean, that was my big issue with Catacombs, uh, the first edition before they went to the play mats, was that sometimes you have these uneven edges that, uh, you know, mess up your shots. What is that going to look like? How is that going to affect the price point? What is the interest level in something like this as a sport on the tabletop? I have no idea, but it's going to be interesting to see when it goes live on the 12th. So let's talk about last week's over-unders real quick. Where are things at as we go? Now, the first one I said was Tamashi. 764,000 euros. Don't take my word for it. It's 830,000 US dollars. Uh, well, I said, which one? That one or Aries? Well, Aries is at 860 right now, and that's, uh, well, 11 hours to go at the time of me filming this. So Aries wins. Got that one right. Next one, I said Oak, 148,000 euros. We go back over here, and we get $161,200. And that's interesting because we go back over to Ryozen. I said Oak or Ryozen. I picked Ryozen. It looks like Oak is just going to edge it out at the very end here by probably about $10,000. Again, 13 hours to go, but uh, I don't expect that to be over. So I guess um, I'm going to be wrong on that one. I said Habitats over under $200,000. I was wrong. It killed it. Good job, board game tables. Looks amazing. Uh, again, I was wrong on that one. And then I said uh, over under on Title Blades, a million dollars. And 23 hours to go at this point. But $156,000 to go in the last 24 hours. I'm probably going to say I'm right on that one because I said the under. But, I mean, we'll wait to be seeing until the final point. But there you go. Now, the last one was two and a half games over 100000 I said over, actually. And I was wrong, I believe. Because, now, again, I'm not going to count this. This is not a board game. Tentacle Kitty uh, stuffed animals that I talked about. Uh, committee, you know, as much as the committee wants to win the bet, the committee is very fair. Uh, this one, Maglev Metros, as well as Aldara, whoever that one is, right there. Those are the only two. Actually, no. I take that back. I did win the bet because I almost forgot about the game found Master Dater. There you go. So I actually got that one right. I thought for the whole time leading up to this point that I was going to get wrong. So there you go. That one's right. So let's talk about what is on the horizon for this week. You know, I make this first one sort of a, the old Tiger Woods, right? If you've ever uh, followed sports at all about, you know, 15 years ago, the bet whenever Tiger Woods, the professional golfer, was in a tournament, they would say uh, on the bet, do you take Tiger or do you take the field? Literally everyone else playing. And a lot of people took Tiger pretty much every time. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say the dark quarter or the field. What do you think? I'm going to go with the dark quarter. I think Far Cry Beyond is going to test things, but I think the dark quarter with what Destiny's did... Uh, I'm going to give the edge to Dark Quarter, and I'm probably going to be wrong, but we'll see. There you go, number one. We'll say number two, Casting Shadows. Where does Casting Shadows end up? Does it end up more than, we'll say, uh, $3.25 million, over or under? 
Again, I'm probably going to put the over on this one. I'm going to do the over on this one as well. I'm still pledging for it right there. You can see up at the top. This is going to be a last minute decision though for me as number two. Darkest Doom also ending in about four days time shortly after this video airs. So let's say, will it be over or under? We'll say $450,000. $450,000. I'm going to actually go with the over because I think uh, it's going to be, you know, getting the surge at the end here. Number three. Number four, we're going to go Nightmare Cathedral because this is sort of a weird thing. I got a random package uh, from Borden Dice about Nightmare Cathedral. It was like a mini and a little promo card. <laughs> I have no clue. Just randomly showed up over the weekend. Uh, but we're going to say, uh, we're going to keep this in the euros because I'm not going to go back and forth on the US dollars on this one. But let's say, does it break 150,000 euros? Again, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go over because I think... There's only about 10% backing right now that we're following. So I'm going to give it the push of over 150,000 euros at the end here. And you know, last but not least, we'll just go back to this page because I don't have anything else in store particularly. Let's just say again, let's make it three and a half games though. Three and a half games over 100,000. And again, I'm going to go over on this one. I'm going to go over because I think you're going to see some higher funding ones this week than the past week. Even though, I mean, Maglev Metro got 57,000. Uh, Legacy of Thrax is about the same thing. And so you've got a couple of these that are sitting like low, but not breaking the 100K that will eventually break 100K. Same thing with Mall Peak. I mean, 71. It's going to break 100K easily by the time it's done, but within the first week. But I'm going to give you three and a half over under. I'm going to go over. Quick break here before we get to TV time. What else do you want to see in this video? Is there anything else you want to see contained in this video? How many, especially with yesterday's video, are updates of older campaigns that I've talked about worth it? Are there specific things you're looking for? What sort of things are going to make you tune into this video or even the roundup from yesterday? When I talk about all the new games, what is going to get you to watch it more frequently or to be more enticed about it in general? Let me know anything else you'd like to see me cover on this crowdfunding aspect of things. I mean, even games, email questions. I mean, I'm completely open to things, guys. I will be also having a new board game news video coming out on Monday in case you missed the earlier announcement of GameFound. I'm going to be talking about that one heavily and my thoughts on it in particular, both yay, nay, and somewhere in between as well. So submit your questions uh, ahead of time so I can address it. So when I film it, you can get your things in there and I'll shout you out by name even if you want. Yeah, 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 I know I'm doing it. So TV time, TV time. I'm still watching Top Boy on Netflix, uh, the gang-affiliated, drug-peddling-based London show. It's, it's a very solid show. It's a little dark at times, though. The other thing I got into, and this is going to not surprise you, but I would actually highly recommend it if you have any interest or if you have kids, especially if you have kids. On Netflix, there is a show. It's a Korean drama called Sky Castle. Believe me, I was not... A, initially very enthralled by it but it's grown on me significantly basically it's taking a look at the korean culture specifically but culture in general of parents and their kids and how the parents are forcing their kids to do act certain ways especially academically in order to achieve what the parents want for them rather than what the kids want for themselves and it's done in a very interesting manner it's got some very interesting dynamics there both of the dynamic of social class, but also pedigree and also motivations behind having kids do what they do. I mean, right? I mean, talk about uh, not necessarily academically over here in America, but especially like I see it locally sports wise, right? You know, we've got these kids that are like six and seven and eight, and they're already like doing year round sports and travel teams and things like that. And parents are like, go, 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 gotta be the best, you know, right? And it sort of takes the script and does that more on the Korean academic aspect and it's done really well and it's got me really um watching right now it's a little bit you know hitting close to home at times because you know it's it's there but it's it's worth watching too if you have any interest from that aspect I'm not watching a whole lot else right now because I mean the episodes are about an hour long and I'm only about a third of the way through the season so there's 20 episodes so that's about all I've been into lately uh, I think I'm at about 13 or 14 new games already this month at this point. So I will be having sometime next week a look back on the games that I played in March and ranking them this time. I'm going the Rado, uh, I forget, the Raul <laughs> uh, route, and I'm going to rank all of my games played uh, going forward. 
So you can say, okay, well, Chris, you liked it or Chris, you played it and you put a video down on it, but where does it fall in terms of, you know, that and how do you compare it to the other things that you played? So I'm going to be doing that. So tune in for that next week. Uh, as well as I'm going to be looking at just all of my backed and did you back as well. That aspect of things. Plus little spoilers. What do you think about board game conventions? There you go. Little spoilers everywhere. Again, let me know your thoughts. Email me. You know, I'm always happy to interact. I'm always happy to answer questions. I'd love to get people emailing me on a regular enough basis uh, so that I could, like, you know, pose questions and just do a whole video like that if that would be interesting. Uh, crowdfunding, retail, anything else in between. I'm completely open to it. So, again, let me know what else you want to see from the channel. What else would get you to watch? Uh, subscribe, click, whatever on a regular basis. And if you already are, thank you so much in the first place. That's all I got. Have a great weekend. I got a kid's party. And my goal is to get two new games played this weekend as well. Spoilers. Rah, rah, rah. And I'm not talking about cheerleaders. That's all I got for you. See you around.